Hey everyone, Tactics here with yet another Advanced Mythic Plus Guide for Season 2 of Dragonflight, this time covering Halls of Infusion. I'll be walking you through a timed plus 20 Tyrannical Incorporeal key that we did, discussing our routing, how we handled the individual pulls and boss fights, lost timings, and much more. Notably in this key, we also did a lot of testing with Mind Soothe, so I'll be showing kind of that off and how we adjusted our route accordingly, what kind of skips we did, that kind of thing. Before getting into it though, I do just want to reiterate that these routes are definitely not pug friendly. Instead, they're targeted at groups looking to push high keys that have more coordination. But if you want something to do in kind of your weekly keys, I've got easy to execute routes over on my channel, which I'll also link down in the description below if that's something you want to see. Otherwise, let's get into it here where we opt to front load a lot of our trash pulls in this dungeon just to get count early on so we can skip things later. So we actually end up pulling a lot of these packs here off the start uh, that a lot of groups would otherwise walk through the middle and skip. So we group everything up here. There's a few kicks here. And the ba basically what you're worried about in these packs are the defenders that have that demo shout cast. And then the containment apparatus would have that big AOE cast. Uh, outside of that, the defenders again have that frontal, which is kind of like a channel that applies a bleed to anyone in front. So that's why you see me in the corner uh, facing away from the rest of the party. And both those kicks that we just mentioned are also stoppable. So you just kind of need one thing, either a kick or a stop assigned to them. And so it's pretty easy to actually pull a lot of these mobs, even if you don't have access to the kicks here. Uh, so we're running around here, avoiding these spike pulls. I think our healer actually had to swap talents right at the beginning. Uh, but then we're going for the next group here. So we've got these two mobs. And I'm just going to run it over uh, to the next two. And I'm actually going to go right here again, picking up more count because we want more count early on in the dungeon. Again, watching here, defenders with a demo shout apparatus uh, with their own uh, interrupt impulse or whatever it's called. The other thing to be careful of here is making sure you don't pull too many apparatuses because those are the really dangerous guys in terms of random target damage, right? They have that beam that they'll channel on a random target. And what we've decided basically is that Pulling three is a no-go, so you want to maximize the pulls here by having two apparatuses. Anything more than two apparatuses is basically a canceled pull, particularly on Fortified Week, so that's how we kind of plan our pulls around here. And we're, like I said, we're not really worried about kick counts in these pulls because these kicks are one per mob, the two mobs that I mentioned, the defenders and the apparatuses, and they're stoppable as well. So you can pretty much cover no matter how many of those you pull, you're pretty good. This one, uh, I think one goes, oh no, we do manage to get it all. I think the problem here is that I didn't uh, Avenger Shield walking into the pole, and so they kind of walked past me and hit the healer because uh, Avenger Shield was on CD and I was getting stopped here, so be careful of that. I, I should have been able to get those guys. Uh, that's why the healer died. Anyways, though, uh, these packs are all kind of the same, right? Like, it's like the apparatus is doing random damage. The Geomancers are just going to jump out. That's why you kind of see people positioned a little bit closely. You can see I'm kind of sidestepping these defenders' frontals and facing them always, like, against an edge uh, so that the melee have a pretty safe spot to be. Because of the range are positioned relatively close to the pack, the Geomancers don't really jump that far. And in terms of incorporeal, a lot of it is being handled by the Hunter, the Evoker, or the Priest. Uh, the... Uh, uh rogue is kind of a backup so if like it's really needed we have blind but obviously blinds a much longer cooldown uh and as the tank here i'm usually in this particular comp i'm not too concerned with them uh so i'm mostly just doing the pack because we have really really easy accessible ones from the hunter the priest and the evoker right they all have very very good uh forms of cc i think with scare beast freezing trap for the hunter sleepwalk for the evoker and then uh, shackle uh for the actual priest so they have a lot of ways to deal with it uh, so for the most part, as a paladin in this group, I don't really need to actually be focusing them, though I could if I needed to take either Repentance or Turn Evil uh, to deal with them. Uh, so over here, we're just kind of chain pulling, freeing up the Engineering Orb to get our Cheat Death here, uh, continue pulling, continue pulling. This is the pack in front of the boss room. We are going to do one more pull here, and this does a couple things. One, again, we're front-loading count, right? Uh, and, and in terms of lust, we did lust that very, very first pull just to get it on CD because as you can see here, it's going to take us like six minutes to get to the boss fight. Um, so it, that will be holding lust for way, way, way too long. So we just rip it early on. We're pulling one more pack behind me here. And that technically opens up the shortcut. Uh, again, this is probably the worst shortcut to ever exist ever. Uh, so it's not ideal to ever use it, really. You probably either want to just res out of combat or battle res uh, instead of using this shortcut in almost all situations, uh, except for like early on, like this point in the dungeon, you would just release, right? But later on in the dungeon, once you get past the first boss, you pretty much always want to wait for res or battle res uh, just because this shortcut kind of sucks. 
Um, but it's open nonetheless. So now it's open. Uh, we do this one more pack here. This is the double, another double apparatus pull and triple defender. So there's five kicks in this pack slash a stops, right? So, and just making sure they're covered by a mix of interrupts or stops is all you really need to do. Uh, and then again, kind of making sure we're kind of facing these bleed guys away. So the entire party is not getting bled up by that spear flurry. I've got a ton of snacks here. I have a couple ways to deal with it. Uh, if I'm actually in danger in a higher fort key, I would probably either dwarf or immune these off. Uh, but as it stands on a 20 tyrannical key, I'm really not too worried about having that many bleed stacks. But uh, I could do a better job sidestepping these frontals because the frontals do lock into place, right? So when that happens, like I can just do this. Like I, I didn't get a single stack here, right? So it's very easy to just keep doing that to make sure you have clean space and you don't get any stacks of the bleed or maximum one stack of the bleed as a tank. I'm just being a little lazy here. So uh it's a 20 tyrannical it's not going to kill me but that will definitely kill you on fortified keys uh especially higher keys in general right so just be aware of that boss here just facing the fist away from the group the rest of the party is stacked up behind us and they're just going to do um a little mass to spell when the power overload comes out and we're all just going to immediately start running away uh towards the center of the room basically just ping-ponging back and forth uh, between the edge here and the center so boom mass to spell frontal goes out Everyone's out. They eat like one tick of the circles. Not a big deal. Uh, if this ever gets super dangerous, you would probably just have people run out like this way maybe and drop it over there uh, just so you don't murder people with multiple ticks of the pool. But at least on a 20 Tyrannical, like I'm saying, and in, in probably a few more key levels higher, it wasn't too dangerous even eating one tick of the triple pool. Not a big deal. You're going to see us. We're just going to do it again, right? Basically just ping-ponging back and forth. And that's kind of what you do this whole fight. Eat a tick, maybe a couple ticks. Not the end of the world there, um, but definitely you'd want to be faster. Make sure you only eat one tick on a higher tyrannical key if you're doing the stack strat. Uh, otherwise, again, you may have to be spread out so you avoid having the triple tick overlap uh, for the entire party. Uh, have to see, though, on higher keys. We'll, we'll see what ends up being the play. Push phase at 15% here. Want to just group up these guys and kind of like chain CC them, uh, nuke them underneath the boss. Pretty straightforward. And then, of course, based on the number of sacks the boss gets, you get the massive circle uh, in the next phase, which is not ideal. Not much to talk about there, but big damage. There it is, right? This one definitely hurts a bit more because you have to eat like two to three ticks. So this is probably one you may want to actually run out instead of doing the triple uh, stack. Uh, just run to the side a bit so not everyone gets absolutely nuked by it. That does mean you'd have to actually sit on the dot a little bit, which may not be ideal, right? Because this dot is not, uh, it's not like a ton of damage, but it's still a little spooky, right? We instant dispelled actually before we even got a take. So potentially you want to spread this out instead of doing that because that was a lot of damage uh, with the after the first phase. So potentially a, a strat change up for the second phase when this is way, way, way bigger, uh, but just something to keep in mind. Uh, skipping past the oh, too far too far skipping past the boss here we do go left because you get access to a mushroom very early on which is nice uh we end up pulling both these shock troopers in so just make sure we have kicks uh and we purge that off before they get much uh much chaos happening uh, this is very important it's kind of dangerous there's four shock troopers going to be in this pull i actually kind of want to keep pulling after this uh, we stop for a bit just to make sure that we get kicks. I think we end up do we do end up missing one eventually uh, here, but very very dangerous. So you want to make sure there's always a kick or a stop on these shock troopers. I'm just gonna keep running here. Gonna add some of the uh, flies down the way, uh, as well as a couple frogs. Another stealth dude here, so be careful. Trying to get stunned. See, I'm spamming AOE abilities trying to knock him out. Drag these dragon flies in. They have a frontal and dazzle. It's always tank targeted, so you can actually um, dodge it. And there's where the thing goes off here. And this is start. This is the beginning of the chaos, beginning of the chaos here, because uh, X has a buff for a little bit out of that Hodge, and he nukes people, I think. Yeah, he gets a little kill, so elemental focus is very, very scary if it does go off, so keep that in mind. Uh, otherwise, though, aside from the chaos, uh, I think probably the play would have been just to run down here ASAP. I do manage to get everything uh, and point all these dragonflies into the corner here, so they're very easy to just kind of sidestep, except for that one guy. And it's all well and good now. We did have one death, of course, but uh, not the end of the world. We probably should have battle res there, actually. Um, but basically here, poison dispels are always nice. And the reason we actually go this way is because we can pick up the mushroom on this side, which will give us that poison dispel for the frog boss. Again, Dazzle's here, all in the corner. We didn't actually need to stop that. They would have hit nobody there. So something to keep in mind with these dragonfly positioning. You can stop the cast, you can kick the cast, or you can point into a corner and ignore the cast entirely, assuming your tank walks out of the way, of course. So keep that in mind. The mushroom's just going to be to our side here. 
soon as we're done with this trash pack. It's going to be right over here in the bottom right corner of my screen. Whenever I turn around at some point. Turn around. There it is. There's a mushroom. We grab that one. Uh, we're grabbing these two dragonflies here. There's also a mushroom there if you want that one. And then we're moving down this hallway. Again, keeping in mind there are two stealth guys here. We end up getting them right at the entrance. Then we go down all this hallway. Group everything up here. Same deal with the dazzles, right? I can just point them up against this wall here. We're actually LOSing an incorporeal, by the way, right now. One spawned back there. So we're just ignoring it. We're LOSing it. Uh, and we're staying down here. And basically just AOEing this pack down. Nothing too crazy uh, about it here. The next pull coming up is going to be a big one. I think on Fort Weeks, you probably bloodlust it. We didn't. I think there was even an argument for us to bloodlust it on a Tyrannical Week, honestly. But lusting the frog was pretty nice as well. We end up holding lust for the frog on Tyrannical Week. So uh, we didn't need lust to get through this pack. But I, I think you could have lusted it just for, for tempo. Uh, but basically, we mind soothe past this first group here. Hug the left, and this just allows for easier grouping of the, the packs here, because we're going to pull the mini bosses on top of these guys. And like I said here, we've got kicks, so I'm the prop paladin. I'm basically assigned to just kick the mini boss, uh, the fire mini boss, which only hits the tank anyways. And everyone else is going to be assigned to kicking some of these shock troopers. And basically just making sure uh, that they never get empowered, or if one goes off, that we purge it off, uh, essentially. So one does go off there, I believe. One tick, and then we purge it off quickly. Ideally, again, though, like an AoE stop would have gotten all of those right there, right? So if you have, like, a kick and an AoE stop prepared for that, it's usually more than enough. And then otherwise, we're just nuking this pack down again. Big, big value bloodlust on a fort week. Uh, I think we probably honestly should have lusted it too. Uh, it's just you get really good uh, value out of it, I think. Multi-target. They're all alive for a decent amount of time. Um, there's two mini bosses in this pack, right? So I think even on Tyrannical, we could argue it's a good bloodlust. Uh, but just depends on how scared you are of the frog boss coming up next. Uh, here, the only thing is the molten subduction outside of the kicks, of course. Uh, that's going to root somebody and then spawn a big swirly under them as a combo uh, from the flame caller. So we can freedom it or any other root break that would work on like entangling, for example. Uh, you can do that as well. But we just kind of freedom the person. It always spawns on the person that was rooted. The swirly does. Uh, so keep that in mind. Uh, if you're all like stacked up under the boss, you're going to have to move. So that's why the range are a little bit further out. Uh, but then we go to Mr. Frog boss here. Uh, and for this boss, basically what happens is that you want to try and get the frogs underneath the Goliath to kill them with the gulp. And for the timing of that, at least the first one, it happens almost instantly, right? So it's going to go croak to spawn all of the frogs. And then it's going to go gulp almost immediately after that. Uh, only the first one acts with that. So you're going to see they stack up relatively close to the boss here. We spawn all these frogs as close as we can. And then what you'd want to do is kind of use AOE slows or stuns right here at like this moment and CC them all in this gulp. So the frog eats them all. I think we do get most of them still. Two of them little ran out a little bit. Knockbacks also work great. And notice the circle is going to be a tiny bit bigger. I don't know if it actually shows here. The circle is actually a tiny bit bigger than it seems. Yeah, you can't really tell here, but it actually will eat frogs on the outer edge of that circle, not just inside of it fully. Uh, and then other than that, obviously having the mushroom here uh, can be really helpful. Uh, I think we actually missed... Oh, we didn't have an herbalism in this group, herbalist in this group, but... If you had the mushroom here, you have the free poison dispels. Otherwise, you can kind of spam your poison dispel uh, as many as you have just to reduce this damage going out. And also, of course, make sure people aren't getting one shot by the 10 stack. Um, but otherwise here, now the croaks from here on out, there's going to be a pretty big delay. You can see that gulp timer here. There's a pretty substantial delay now, another like 15 seconds basically, before the gulp's going to happen. So what you kind of have to do is ideally I think bait them towards one area and then dash through the boss using things like that binding shot there, slows, stuns, and then again aiming to get them under the boss for this gulp cast here. As soon as this happens, big knockback here, boom. You see those guys were outside the circle and they still died. So that's kind of what you're aiming for here. You want as many of them as possible to be eaten by that gulp because those frogs actually melee quite hard. Uh, really the poison's not the main source of damage it's actually their melees that are very very scary uh and so ideally again you want to be ccing them when they spawn getting the heck away from them and ideally kiting them straight through the boss by the time the gulp is actually going off here so we probably could have done this a little bit better i think we're taking quite a bit of extra damage here um but i think baiting far away is ranged and then dashing through the boss and putting like a slow if you have any kind of slow on these guys uh, is probably pretty good uh like that boom all of them dead. That's that's what you want to do by the end of it. But I think we could probably do a little bit cleaner and take less damage while doing that. But that's kind of the goal here for this boss fight. Uh, moving through here. 
Uh, this is actually all the trash we skip. So we actually don't play a single mob in this hallway. We literally just run through mind soothing everything. Uh, nothing crazy about it. Just mind soothe and walk by them. Yeah, this looks like it's not going to work. Guess what? It does. Uh, mind soothe, running by, running by. I believe we do commit shroud to this last pole. Yeah, because they cover the whole hallway, right? So we actually do mind soothe and then shroud because the glacial proto dragon has true sight. So shrouding alone wouldn't work. So mind soothe plus shroud for that last pack to actually get through them. Uh, and then we get to the third boss playing literally zero trash mobs between the second and third boss. Uh, I again, I'm not sure this is going to be the best route, but it is pretty interesting because like the dragons are pretty good efficient uh, count wise. They're obviously more healthy than doing the big pulls at the beginning of the dungeon. Uh, so that's a downside of pulling them. And they can get pretty scary pulling them with like the wind guys and the earth shakers in terms of like the stuff you have to dodge. Lots of tank damage with the ice shard and the breath. So that's kind of why we avoided them here. Not sure if it's going to be the optimal thing, but it is. it does feel nice for sure. Uh, in terms of this boss here, as you can see, I'm taking her as close to the actual ice puddle that we're going to use as possible because both me and the rogue you can see here are actually doing our full rotation on the boss from the other side of the ice thing so that's something you can do to get higher uptime for your actual melee dps uh, again point corporeals mostly handled with shackle freezing trap that kind of thing and at this point of the fight we're basically just making sure that we're baiting this tornado uh not at this one that we want to use and this is going to move don't worry and not at one of these old ones right because if we baited here boom big like what 12 yard explosion uh that could hurt if we don't get away from it so just keep that in mind bait it to empty area or like way at the back now again, pulling right next to this thing, uh, and me and the rogue are still able to basically do our full rotation. This is not line of sight here, and we can just hit the boss, hit the boss, hit the boss, keep our uptime here, and the fight just repeats here. There's a ton of raid damage just pulsing this entire time, right? It's a pretty scary fight for healers, like it's doing 150k HPS here. So there's a lot going out uh, in terms of this fight, and it's all just steady damage. In terms of tank stuff, just be aware of these frost shock timers. Uh, there is no uh, actual... Uh, Past time, right? Just instantly went out on me there. There's the debuff. It slows you as well, but it's a pretty big frost hit. Just be aware of that. Uh, something you can do here is like I pre freedom myself. It doesn't actually mitigate the damage. I still take the hit from the frost shock. As you can see right there, boom, still big hit. I just didn't get slowed, but something to keep in mind here. And then same deal. It's just a dance from this point, bringing them to the icicle so that your melee can still hit it. Running away from the icicle, not baiting into the dead uh, or the cracked rather ices uh, when the tornado comes out and then hiding behind the next safe icicle here. Keep that in mind. It's a really, it's just a dance, right? It's just repetitive, very, very repetitive. Just don't get nuked by the frost shocks because this, every odd phase, the boss will frost shock you twice. Every even phase, zero times for some reason. So this phase it was zero frost shocks. The next phase would be two. So just keep that in mind. Um, and it starts with a double frost shock phase on pull. So it's a double frost shock initially. That's your first phase. But otherwise, pretty straightforward fight, but still very tough, right? The healer is absolutely pumping here. Uh, meanwhile, everyone else is not doing too much. So uh, something to note. Anyways, we're going forward now. Uh, we're pulling up to the dragon here. Uh, something we use is actually we pull the dragon back a little bit so that we can use both this to LOS the waves here and we can use these lamp posts to LOS as well. So I'm pulling the dragon, pulling the dragon back a little bit. Uh, again, the big thing to be careful of here is this AoE on the ground, which is hard to see, which is why I get stunned by it. Uh, and then we have the tank buster from the dragon in the frontal breath, so I'm facing it off to the side here. We also have the tank buster in the ice shard from the ice caller. That's actually one of the more dangerous tank busters this season, just so people are aware. It may not look dangerous, but it is actually very, very scary, especially on fortified week, so be aware of it. Try and stop that as much as you can. It's not kickable, so try and commit a stop to it if you can, and you can just kick the heel. Uh, otherwise... Earthshaker circle, you may have to move a little bit for that as the melee, but the range can kind of just AFK out there and avoid the actual uh, puddles uh, anyway. So that's a pretty nice spot there. Whenever you see these lamp posts, that is a spot range can stand on. And we're going to use it again here. We're pulling all the way up to the next one here. Um, there's just a uh, Gale Singer, which is pretty scary. You want to keep kicks on them. And then, of course, there's the random target uh, attack in a uh, the Tempest that goes on the ground. No cast time, just a big area denial there. There it goes out on the actual lamp post. It doesn't actually deal a ton of damage, so we found that you can just kind of plant in it, at least on, on this week. Potentially, you might be a little bit more scared of it on fortified weeks, uh, but just something to keep in mind there. And similarly, we do the mini boss in this spot as well. Uh, we pull him slightly away um, because he does that big flash freeze. So we're like hanging around here, Maybe a little bit closer so that you could stand there where the evoker's standing and the priest can still stand over there. And they're just kind of like fully AFK, don't need to worry about dodging whatsoever, can just 
pure cast so that's the benefit of using kind of these two spots for ranged and i drop it there and me and the rogue who are more mobile with our damage are fine just rotating out of it and the evoker doesn't have to move the healer doesn't have to move any range wouldn't have to move so that's kind of the benefit of tanking this guy uh right here uh, and then you move into the last boss and so for this last boss i've actually heard uh oh too far I've heard about issues with the tank buster and so i'll talk about that so basically um the big hits are always the tempest fury so that's probably what you'd be personally on higher tyrannical keys the infused globules uh, they are baited on player positioning it seems so if you cluster together see we got like four spawns right on where me and the rogue were together and then this opens up a giant open space for you wall buffet so this is the combo so i actually bubbled a little late here so what you can do as a paladin is you can bubble the first squall buffet you can spell warding yourself for the second and you can bubble again for the third and then you wouldn't have something for the um the fourth uh but hopefully you don't have four phases um but basically that means you don't get knocked and you can just stay in melee and eat the combo what happens sometimes is the boss decides hey i'm gonna swing on a different melee person because i'm a stationary boss and why not or sometimes they're like hey i'm gonna channel the tank buster on a different person because i just knocked the tank out of range what you can do as a tank here and what i do here because i forgot to bubble early uh, is just taunt the boss so i taunt the boss here and he's now fixated on you right something that a lot of people forget is taunting a boss fixates them onto you so by taunting him as i get knocked out it means that he will not melee uh, a random player in in melee or he won't melee my rogue in this case and he won't accidentally channel onto my rogue either so keep that in mind if you are a tank spec that's going to be getting knocked back by that which again a paladin shouldn't be for the first three uh what you can do is just taunt as you're getting knocked back and then run back as fast as you can and that should make sure that you are safe now again if you are not immuting it like a paladin does uh, you will want to pop a pretty significant defensive on that aoe or the tank buster rather because it is pretty hard hitting it's a channeled tick of magic damage so be careful of it make sure you have something available for it uh, because it, it can be pretty scary uh, in terms of the damage taken gauntlet here running it like usual uh, and then what you're going to see us here is we're going to kick um two and then i believe we see c cc one and kick three maybe um basically you don't need to fight these fully you just want them to stop channeling and fuse so you see here we get the cc's on one uh we kick these two we get the stops on the inundates here because you never want them to go off then we kick this uh third guy here and we grouped them up again and basically what we timed it as is now these three are synced up right so that's kind of the timing of us breaking that third one these three are synced up one aoe stop can get them Boom, and then we can break out this last guy. We'll just get him with a single target stop. Nuke these adds down ASAP before anything else happens. So that's kind of how it works. Again, I'll rewind just to show it again. Basically, we come down. My side with the tank kicks both. We bring them down. The other side, CC, ideally CCs both. I think we just didn't have two CCs for this side, which is fine. Not all comps are going to have CCs. So then I move towards the one that isn't CC'd to kick that one and sync it up with these guys. So as soon as I can, I sync it up and we group them up one more stop to get them. And then we get the final one with a single target stop committed uh, to deal with theirs. And then boom, they're all dead before anything else happens. But again, we do have another AOE stop primed for this. The evoker still has one in case we need it, uh, but we just don't need it there. And that's how we handle that relatively quickly. And then from here, the fight just repeats, right? It is the exact same as P1. You're going to have to deal with that Tempest Fury big hit. You only have to deal with one tank buster combo here. And I'm pretty sure uh, you're going to see I'm going to like spell wording it. Uh, yeah, I don't have bubble up, right? Bubble will come back for the third set. Uh, so I'll have to spell wearing this one. That does mean if you end up four phasing this boss, uh, you will have to just, you know, take the knockback and, and run back into the taunt thing, like I said. But otherwise, uh, pretty straightforward here. And try and stack during those globule spawns to bait all the spawns on one half of the room here like that boom this entire other half is clear because all of us run the one half of the boss uh, but otherwise this fight just repeats from there there we have it guys my full walkthrough plus 20 halls of infusion hopefully this does help you guys out if it does be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more content like it if you have any questions drop those down in the comments below or you can come ask me over on my twitch channel at tactics where i stream all these high keys as well as mythic rating from a tank's perspective as always big thank you to all of my subscribers over on patreon for the support a big thank you to all of you guys for watching and i'll see you in the next video